All right, let's get started. Uh, welcome to the Prometheus team functional group update. Uh, let's start. Uh... All right, so my name is Ben Kochi. I'm the Prometheus team lead. Uh, we have Joshua. Uh, uh, Jose, uh, Mike, and Paul on the team. Uh, in the last couple of months, uh, it has it's been a while since we did an update because of the uh, summit. In 10.1 and 10.2, we spent most of our time uh, working on uh, front-end uh, display issue cleanup, uh, got through a bunch of nice bug fixes there. Uh, in 10.2, we started working on the InfluxDB feature parity uh, and while we have the, some of the feature parity in, uh, we've, we've had a little bit of problems, so we'll be talking about that next. Uh, some of the things that we are trying to do in, in InfluxDB did not directly translate, uh, and we had to disable a few things that were uh, a bit excessive for the Prometheus uh, metrics. Uh, uh, and we have been having a number of issues with the Ruby gem that generates the metrics. Uh, we are still working on this, uh, is close to being done. And I will uh, uh, hand this over to Powell to talk about. Okay, thanks, Ben. Uh, can you switch the slides for me, please? Okay, this slide is okay. Uh, so, to give you a quick rundown, we run our uh, Ruby processes, uh, like our GitLab. Uh, in a multi-process setup using Unicorn. It means that on each server, we have multiple processes, each uh, handling all the requests. Which, so we want to gather metrics from all those process and display it for a Prometheus server to be able to scrape those metrics. To do it, uh, we uh, went with a scheme where we save all the metrics in a file on a file system, preferably in a memory-backed file system, like temp, so, so it's faster. And, and then the process that handles the request that to collect the metrics, processes all the files, and sends the reply to the, to the client that requested it. Okay, uh, next slide, please. So we had some problems with that. Um, one of the first, uh, like mostly with metric corruption, one of, there were a few reasons because the, uh, why the corruption happens. One of those was be, the, because we add, like, whenever um, Ruby code adds another metric or uh, creates a, um, a, like new measurement, but with a more, like, just simply adds another metric, it needs to add a, a line to the file. Um, sometimes the file gets enlarged. Like, we start with 4,000 kilobytes and then we go up to like 15, 16 kilobytes. Some, mostly it works, but sometimes it didn't. Turns, that, turns out there internally a map gem that handled that at one point had a bug that, that didn't update internal, um, internal information about the file size and that gets triggered. Why it only triggered some of the time, I'm not sure because um, I haven't traced that, but, but just adding one, one added, uh, uh, the, the storage line uh, seems to fix that. Um, so yeah, that, that's working now correctly. Um, Okay, next slide, please. Um, if there are any questions about any of these, like I'm happy to answer. Uh, so, yeah. Um, the other problem we had, uh, we needed to, um, I think I'm, there was some bug in this uh, slide. Uh, anyway, the, 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 one of the uh, first problems we had with the gem actually was that we created tons of metrics files on uh, staging, like 40,000 or 30,000. And it would, then we needed to process those files. It was because the, each file was created for a um, unique PID, like the for pro worker process was spawned, it had a PID, it created a metric file, then the process died, um, it was respawned by a unicorn master, and the process continued until, unless, until we had like thousands of files. So to combat this, we uh, implemented worker ID instead of PID. Worker ID is like internal information from Unicorn, which ID the worker has. So like, like there's eight uni workers. So at one point, there will be, uh, each process would have one ID. Um, so the, the, this was all fine, but the, the, the way to get those 
uh, out of Unicorn um, was buggy. So we got uh, bug, uh, bogus workers ID. So the, the worst clashes that it turned out that sometimes the process uh, will start writing on another process file because uh, it thought it had ID zero. The other process as well thought that it had ID zero. So now we lock the files using flock, which is fine. Uh, it works, but the problem is that sometimes that uh, the lock got uh, uh, inherited by the from the lock was created in master process, then got inherited in the in the worker process, which is another slide. Um, yeah, um, this is I think most of the problems that uh, that we encountered was due to preload app, like because uh, it changes how the the, the initialization is done especially changes uh, compared to what you what we are working in GDK. And yeah, uh, it mostly resulted in file corruption um, like the, because uh, the worker processes uh, had wrong information about which file to write because of they inherited the information from the master process. Uh, so yeah, the fi final solution to that is was turned out uh, to be checking if the pitch change on every operation because otherwise there's no way to just uh, to be able to uh, execute code just after fork before any other code is executed because like the, there are background threads that are already running they can uh, already start um, corrupting the files so that's handled right now um, okay next slide Please, um, yeah. Uh, this is mostly, right now we are in a phase where we try to optimize some of the operations. One of those was metric initialization. When, once we added a lot of the influx DB metrics, um, it turned out they uh, slowed down the system a bit, at least for the initialization part. So when they first created, it took a little bit longer uh, because the, and then it affected how long the first re first request to a resource is, uh, how how long it it takes to process the first request. Um, yeah, because um, there were some locking issues. Like we we had the locking, so the, uh, the, the no other operation can be done on the file at the same time when we add another entry. So like uh, concurrently, another thread cannot add the same entry in the same place and, and just get corruption again. So um, yeah, but to fix that, we re-implemented this in C and took advantage of, of uh, global interpreter lock. And also it's faster because it's C, um, which is another slide. Uh, so yes, turned out after enabling all the metrics that we have like a lot of metrics to process and it, it, this issue is exacerbated by the fact that we have uh, eight or 20 workers. Well, I think we have 24 on production, eight on uh, dev. And this multiplies the amount of metrics we need to process of on each request to display them. Um, yeah, and Ruby is, too slow to that for that. As uh, even using J parsing, we, we we use JSON internally to um, to store the fields. Like there are small JSON, like four entries uh, in a in a array, and parsing the JSON for the two hundred thousand metrics, two hundred thousand metrics takes about five seconds uh, only JSON. So yeah, after optimizing it using simpler JSON library and switching to C uh, and optimizing some of the algorithms, we uh, optimized it like from 27 seconds to run to 200 milliseconds. I already uh, get the same results from the C code and most of the parsing is in C right now. So sometimes the solution is not to use Ruby, sadly, but yeah. Um, this way, we we were able we we are now able to get it fast enough so we can process even more metrics uh, as needed. Uh, so we will have a room to grow and add more metrics um, on top of the seven thousand we currently have. Okay, I think that's all from the uh, and that that's still in progress. Once we finish that, uh, that that will be deployed to dev to to our test server that we now have and use to test all the changes and. Yeah. And hopefully that will stabilize all the uh, and fix all the performance problems. Yeah, I think that you can uh, talk then. All right, thanks, Paul. Um, 
Yeah, so there's a whole bunch of problems getting our uh, our metrics library up uh, up to standards so that we can actually use it. Uh, hopefully, one of these uh, days we'll be able to upstream some of these changes into the official Prometh uh, Prometheus Ruby client. Uh, the official Prometheus Ruby client does not actually support uh, multi-process metrics, so we really would like to contribute this upstream, uh, and hopefully, it's not uh, uh, too complicated a patch for upstream. Um, in uh, coming up in 10.3, uh, we've got a few new features for CE. We're going to be deploying uh, Prometheus to Kubernetes automatically. So if you have a project uh, in Kubernetes and you're using uh, CD to deploy it, uh, CD will also be able to deploy a Prometheus server to monitor your app. Um, this is going to be uh, a super nice feature for, for Kubernetes users. Um, we're also going to work on a first iteration of Grafana dashboards for Omnibus uh, users, or actually specifically the Omnibus admins, uh, so that they can uh, check the health of their GitLab installs using, using Grafana. Um, we're also going to be including uh, Sidekick and Workhorse metrics in this, so that uh, uh, we've turned this on by default, so that now uh, Omni uh, Omnibus users will be able uh, we'll be able to see the status of their sidekick and workhorse. Uh, coming up in EE, uh, we're adding custom metrics. So if you have a project, uh, you'll be able to set your own uh, uh, own uh, Prometheus queries to, and display those in your project. Uh, this will this will make it uh, uh, nicer if you have uh, specific business or or other type of custom queries that you would like to add to your your merge request workflows. Uh, we're also going to be trying to uh, add this integrated browser testing. So we will be running before and after site speed measurements and displaying that in uh, the merge request interface, if I remember correctly. Uh, and then uh, Prometheus in GitLab.com production. Uh, we've been working on deploying Prometheus 2.0, which is an amazing new release for Prometheus. Uh, it has a 10 times reduction in CPU usage, 100 times reduction in IO usage. Uh, and because of this, we were able to find some, uh, some bugs that were causing ex excess uh, CPU and memory usage and reduce the, uh, the overhead of some of the recording rules that we had. Uh, we also started deploying Prometheus to monitor the, the runner pools. Uh, previously, we had no idea uh, what resources and the state of all the uh, GitLab.com runners were in DigitalOcean were, uh, were, so we have been working on deploying Prometheus to monitor those. Uh, that one we want, needed to start out with Prometheus 2.0 due to the high rate of churn of, the, of worker uh, droplets. And that's it. Let's look at the questions. Uh, yes, uh, uh, the merge request issues, uh, a lot of this has been going on in the uh, Prometheus uh, uh, MMAP gem, uh, there's a separate repo for that. I can uh, share that afterwards. Um, uh, how do we make sure we don't introduce new performance problems when introducing new metrics? Uh, that's a good question. Um, basically, the, the any metric that has a large amount of label cardinality can be a problem. So one of the metrics that didn't work well when we converted when we are converting the influx DB metrics uh, was the what was the what the, it had four separate uh, cardinality labels. Uh, it was the Rails controller action. Uh, the method uh, and the caller. So basically, there were something like uh, on a pretty idle server, there were uh, 20, 30,000 metrics. Plus, this was a histogram metric. So every, every label combination was also multiplied by 10. So it, it was exploding into, as Paul said, uh, hundreds of thousands of metrics when running in dev. And this was just way too much. Uh, so when you when you're when you're adding metrics to an app, uh, think about how many label combinations you're going to generate, uh, and 
and make sure that that's not an infinite label set. This is a, uh, documented in the Prometheus upstream docs under the best practices section. Any other questions? Going once, going twice. Thank you, everybody. Have a good afternoon.